Hello, Tony here from Lightwave Digital. In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at the Match Perspective tool in Lightwave Layout. So the Match Perspective tool, it basically lets you composite uh, 3D objects into a 2D image. So let's get on with it. Let's start by adding an image. So under the Render tab, if you go down, and there's an option here that says Set BG Image. So we're going to set a background image. So I've just got an image from the internet. I'll put the link to the image I'm using in the description. So if you want to uh, follow along with it, you can. So if I've got an image loaded, or if you've got an image loaded, you can load it here, which I don't. So I need to load the image. So let's go to my images, choose the image, and add it. Uh, so I'm using the camera one that I've only got. I've only got one camera. I want the camera to match the size of the actual image. So you need to be aware of this. So make sure you know what the size of your image is. And I want to set my background options up using that image so, so I don't have to do it. And here we go. So the image is in. I've got this image of uh, a derelict building inside. And I'm just going to change my bottom right to a, a, a perspective view. So first thing we're going to do is under the render tab again, we go down, you've got match perspective. And when you click it, it adds these, these lines on, these colored lines. And the colored lines um, uh, match up to the actual X, Y, and Z. So if you look in the bottom corner here, the X, Y, and Z are color coded just like these are in the same way. And then what you do is you point, you move them into position of their actual vertical and horizontal lines in your actual scene so they kind of match up so for instance if i just click on one of the little circles and move it you'll see that i can move them along to where i want so here's one of the actual y i'm using this post for now if i left uh, sorry if i right mouse click on the little circles they'll zoom in so you can do it move it by pixels so you can get it spot on uh, if you Double click the center cube, you can lock it to that position if you wish. So let me just move some of these into positions. I'm going to do it fairly quickly. Uh, so with the kind of the X, I'm going to use the back wall. So it's just about lined up. I'll just move it slightly. That'll do. I can probably leave this one. I mean, it's near enough in line anyway. And then for our bluish lines, we're going to use the posts because as they're going back into the distance like so. So they're actually lined up in this way. And based on what image you're using, it might be quite different. My suggestion is with this is to get a few images and just practice. So once I've done that, if you press N on your keyboard, it brings up these options. So these options, I'm going to go through and explain roughly what they are so you understand uh, what each option does so if we start at the top here you've got this lock option and if i click on the drop down there's three options so you've got zoom factor so this keeps the zoom factor fixed but change the film size you've got focal length so this changes the factor and film size keeping focus length fixed and then you've got the frame size the frame size remains fixed but changes the zoom option You've got the swap X and Z. So this basically, it might be that you want the camera to flip around the opposite way. So you want it to be the opposite way. So that's what it'll do. It'll flip it around for you. Like so. You've got this option drop down here. With, it's got fixed height, height from floor and on floor. So the fixed height leaves the camera at its current height. The height from floor adds a gizmo, which... Uh, you can which can indicate the vertical height of something in the scene as measured from the floor uh, so from the x and, and z plane uh, this is where you really need to have your own height so this will let you manually put in the height of the camera in here so if you've took the picture yourself on a tripod and you, you're wondering how high it wants to be that's what you can do with that you've got a reset option here you've got an origin so the origin uh, when on, places a gizmo in the scene, which indicates where the world origin would be. This moves the camera's X and Z. 
and then you've got a solver. So with the solver, I don't really, I can't say I've ever really used it. With the solver, it runs us over a few times every time you press the button uh, in case it hasn't converged to a good solution completely yet. So, but like I said, I've never really used that. So once I've got this set up, from here, all I'm going to do is from the fixed height, I'm just going to tell it to height from floor. And this happens. It brings your actual grid down and it gives you this little line gizmo. But all I want to do is which you can move it around and, and you can stretch out your kind of grid. So if I bring it down and bring it up and so on, you can do that. But what all I'm going to do is click in the middle and I'm just going to bring the whole grid down. So it's literally in line, as you can see now, with the floor level. And once I've done that, I can shut it down, press space bar, and then we're ready to start adding our 3D objects. So now let's add a ground plane to this. So simplest way to do it is go to model, geometry and ground plane. We'll leave everything the same. We'll just click save object. So we save it into our contents folder. Okay, and so we have this ground plane. Now, obviously this is 10 meters squared. So it does knock our grid out bigger. And so it looks off, but it isn't. Don't worry about that, just carry on. So with this, we just need to line it up so it's kind of lined up against the wall like so. So we'll move it against the back wall. And then what I'll do is go to modify, stretch, and we'll just stretch it out a little bit and move it so it's covering the ground. You can go outwards as well. So if you want to stretch it outwards a bit, you can, it's up to you. So let's put a VPR on. So you can see now our ground plane. So if we go to surface editor, onto the ground plane, go to shading models, and instead of photo real, we're just going to put shadow catcher. So now any objects we add, it's going to catch the shadows and lights and stuff. If we go to materials, it's got 50% by default specularity. Now the ground hasn't really, it hasn't got any kind of specular. So let's just put zero in there, okay? So next we need to add an object. So again, let's just go to model, geometry, and let's add a cube this time. Save the cube, we'll just leave everything the same. And it's gonna put this cube in the middle of our seed. So let's move it back and then in the right view, let's move it up. And so it's now on, on the ground, as you can see. Now, if we look at the posts, we can see the shadows are coming from the right to the left where they're not here. So what we'll do is we'll choose the, this light here, which under properties is your distant light. So it's kind of like the sunlight. And what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it and try and duplicate where the shadows are. So modify, rotate, and then let's rotate it. So I'm rotating it round and I'm looking at these shadows to kind of see how I think it should be. Now, currently we'll leave everything the same for intensity. So we'll just put five in here, return, and it softens it a little bit and we can work on that. And also with the light, what we want it to do is we want to bring it in a little bit because this isn't a long, as you can see, it's not a long shadow, it's a short shadow. So we can bring it in a little bit as well, like so. Okay, so, Another thing with this is we're going to add these posts in because currently if I select the box and I move them, they're just going to go over the top of the post and they're not casting the shadows onto the post. They're on the ground, so we can sort that. But another thing we can do is at the top where it says current light, we go to environment light. It's currently using this gradient. I don't have a HDMI of this scene or for this scene. So what we're going to do is cheat a little bit. I'm going to why I'm on environment line, the environment box here, we'll right mouse click and we're going to add a texture environment. Double click, go to texture. For projection, we're using it's a spherical. And for the image, we're using the actual background image through the Y. So we're kind of cheating a little bit. It's not a HDRI, it's not got the 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 proper information to do it but it is going to try and use it which gives it the right a little bit better color and also if we're doing reflections it will help with that a little bit so we're cheating a little bit but it kind of helps a little bit so we've got that and you can increase it 
the, the light intensity if you want. So we've kind of got this now as well. So the next stage is really the post because we've, so we've got our uh, a box and stuff in. We can see it in the actual scene, but like I said, it goes over the post. So the next bit we want to do is we want to sort it out so these posts are incorporated as well. So to add the post, let's let's click on Modeler and we'll jump over to Modeler. So we've got this a cube, a cube layer. Let's just double click it and give it a name. What I'm going to do is it here in my top view. I'm going to switch my top view to the layout view. And it's going to come and say what image you want to use for your layout view. So it's basically asking for that image. So now what we've got is we've got we've got the layout view so we can see where we're putting the post. So I can create the post and put them into position in here. But to be honest, I'm just going to create one and then take it through. So on a new layer. Let's just use the disk tool and let's draw out basic disk, numerical, or do it. I'm not sure how many posts. Let's say six. I think there may be six or seven. We'll go with six. And let's kind of pull it up like so. And so what we're doing, I'm just, I just want, it doesn't have to be the exact size, I just want a representation of the pose. So when, when I'm in layer, I can move it and size it into position. So I'm going to say that, we'll double click it, the, the, the actual layer, give it a name. I'm going to press Q on my keyboard to bring up the surfaces and just give it a, a surface name. And then I'm going to press S on my keyboard to save it. And then I'm just going to go into layout. And then the post comes through. So now we've got the post uh, in the scene. So what we want to do is we want to place the post over this post here. So make sure we're on the post. And I'm moving it across. So it's kind of in front. Let's just zoom in on our top view right in so it's easy to move. So I'm moving it in front of the post. So currently, it's a little bit shorter and it's not quite the right size. So we can carefully size it up like so. And then again, move it into position like so. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure it's covering all of the actual post. Size it a little bit more. So we're about there. Let's say I'm happy with that. So once I've done that, I'm going to clone it and move it. So I'm going to, under the actual, so on your keyboard, if you press Control and C, it's going to say how many clones you want. So I'm just going to do one, and then I'm just going to move the copy and place it in front of the next one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this and do six more posts. So what we've got is each post in front of each one of these posts. And as you're doing this, if you feel you need to just move the size a bit or stretch it out so it fit better, that will be you can do that. Because what the plan is is to make these shadow catches as well, so we can move the the box behind and in front, and they'll cast the shadows and stuff. So I've moved all the posts into the place, as you can see. And so what we're going to do, we're going to go to Surface Editor. And for the poles, we're just going to go to shading models and add shadow catcher. And for them under the materials, we'll get rid of specu. I don't want any. I don't need any shine or gloss on them. So now if we choose the box and I move them towards the post, you can see the shadow is on them now, like they should be. If I move it back a little bit and move it behind the post. You can see it's moving behind the post. Now, if you can see here, there's a very small, like, shine. Or This is because the post isn't directly covering all of the background post of the original image. So if you get this, you just need to go in and adjust the size of the actual uh, 3D object, the post. Or you might just need to move it to the side. To get it kind of, kind of right. So take some time in doing this. 
and make sure it's covering so you don't get that shine on them and you don't get it either end. So that's a matter of playing around with the size and the move just to get it into place and stuff. So like I said, I've kind of rushed a little bit to do this. But yeah, so we've got our box now in our scene and it can be moved around like so and it's casting shadows on the post like so so i mean so what we could do is you could literally if you wanted to i could control c let's clone this box let's put another one over here somewhere like back there rotate it a little bit like so uh, let's clone it again uh, move one forward let's size it down move it down but you get the gist of it that you've got this once you've got your plane set up and stuff so if you've got this image and you wanted to make it into like an old building that's full of old boxes and stuff uh, you could do easy, as easy as that really uh, but this is like i said it is as easy as that i mean if i just load last thing i'll do is if i just let's go into here let's shut off our boxes Like so, and then let's just let me just load an object. I've got various objects. Let's drag on one. And I believe this is quite small. Yes, yeah, so we've got a tiny little dragon here, a little model, which I believe is in one of the previous Lightwave contents folders. So if I size it up, let's just move it back a little bit and whatever texture is on it. And you can see now we've got this little model in our scene and again we can move it i can move it to where we are one and so on and so forth but yeah that's match perspective and shadow catcher uh like i said take your time try out a few images and just practice that's that's what you just need to do play around with the settings but hope you enjoyed the tutorial please share subscribe and look out for the next tutorial